Today, I'm gonna try something new and present my first ever fan fiction story. So let me know what you guys think in the comments and if this is something that you'd like to see more of on the channel in the future. While his resolve was rekindled and he truly recognized the error he had made in his guilt, Luke couldn't help but struggle to regain the composure of a Jedi Master. After his meeting with Master Yoda's spirit, Luke found himself motivated to be there for Rey and the galaxy in the way that they needed, no longer reluctant to embrace the burden of his own legacy. There is no emotion, there is peace, he thought to himself as he gazed out on the raging sea. Despite his years of training, Luke found that his mind was moving rapidly, as was the beat of his heart, perhaps out of anxiety or some sense of residual shock. He had not expected to be granted another lesson from his old master, the message of which forced him to understand his true purpose as a teacher. Now, as the day grew later on Octo, Luke knew what he needed to do. He made his way up to the stone that Rey had perched upon just the day before, his feet passing over the many steps that generations of Jedi had climbed before him. As he did, he began to calm himself, repeating the many mantras and tenets that he had discovered during his time studying Jedi history. The realization that what he was about to do would likely drain him of all of his physical strength induced not a sense of fear in Luke, but one of acceptance. If there was a sacrifice that needed to be made, he would be the one to make it, because he was Luke Skywalker, the legendary Jedi Master who dedicated his life to helping others and maintaining peace. Luke knew that he could not leave Leia and the Resistance to fend for themselves, or let Rey possibly bear the responsibility that needed to fall to him. Entering the large cave, his eyes swept across the small pool that was inlaid with an image of the Prime Jedi, and he felt an even greater sense of purpose and honor when he thought of the first members of the Jedi Order. While just hours before he had told Rey that the legacy of the Jedi was failure, Luke knew that did not discredit what they stood for or their accomplishments. Yoda had taught him that. Suddenly stopping just as he approached the large stone that sat atop the edge of the cliff, Luke was shocked to see another figure, glowing faintly with a blue aura with its back to him. It was a presence Luke had come to believe he would never feel again, a spirit he feared would never be able to appear to him. His father, Anakin, turned and smiled at him. Father, Luke gasped, his eyes wide, his Jedi resolve that had just seemed to recompose nearly falling away once more. Anakin's smile grew wider as he gazed at his son, and Luke could have sworn that his father's spirit glowed slightly brighter, as though his happiness was radiating through the cosmic force itself. Luke, Anakin said, I'm so proud of you. I thought that I would never see you again, Luke replied his voice trailing off, leaving behind a hint of his shock and happiness. The last time that he had spoken to his father had been many years ago, on Tython. Luke had been pulled into a frightening vision of the planet Exegol and forced to do battle with phantoms known as Sith Wraiths. Anakin had saved him, pulling Luke out of the vision at the cost of all of his strength within the Force. Though they had managed a brief conversation at Tython's Seeing Stone, Anakin's ethereal form flickered as he explained that Luke's rescue had drained him completely before he faded back into the Force. In the years that followed, Luke had accepted with much sadness that he would never speak to his father again, at least until he passed on from the physical world himself and joined the Force for eternity. To see Anakin standing before him, looking more powerful and radiant as any Force spirit ever had, was remarkable. Luke was happy that his father would be with him at the end, just as they were together for Anakin's death. I've always been here, Luke, Anakin said. I am always with you in the Force. I'm glad that we can speak now. Your strength is my strength, and I felt the pull to visit you after your conversation with Yoda. This island is a beacon of light, a nexus in the Force. With Yoda's help and the power of your returned presence in the Force, I am able to appear. Father, there isn't much time. The Resistance and Leia, Luke said, but Anakin raised a hand to gently stop him. 
I know, he said, as Luke's brow furrowed in slight confusion. I can sense your thoughts. I see everything through the Force. Past, present, future, in the vast cosmos we inhabit after death, I can see it all at once. Your sister is on crate, with Ben. Ben, Luke echoed softly. If you can sense my thoughts, then you know what I must do. I'm grateful that you can be here with me, Father, and we both know that we'll have time to speak afterwards. I think you may misunderstand, Luke, Anakin replied. He continued, stepping slightly closer. I can't allow your journey to end today. You've experienced much darkness these past years, and I'm afraid the galaxy is still in need of your light. Ben needs you, as does Rey. They do, Luke said, which is why I have to do this. There's no way to reach them in time unless I project to Crate. I agree, but, Anakin said, you will do it with my help. This is the last time I can assist you. I will give you my strength, and the effort will not drain you from the physical world. Instead, my consciousness will pass on, and you will live. Luke felt as though he had been struck in the gut. His father had already sacrificed his life for him before, but now he wanted to go to the next extreme, sacrificing his consciousness within the living force. But then you would be gone, Luke protested, internally realizing how much he sounded like his younger self, impatiently whining to Yoda on Dagobah. No one's ever really gone, Anakin replied with another large smile. This isn't a request, Luke. You are my son, and to watch you grow in wisdom and in the Force has been the greatest gift. If I need to pass out of the physical world forever in order to ensure that you remain, I will gladly make that choice." Although he knew he could not deter his father, Luke felt the urge to argue, even as the faintest inklings of fresh tears welled in his eyes. Just moments ago, he had been resolved to welcome his own death, but now his father was offering him the chance to keep going. Luke would gladly sacrifice himself, but he was also compelled to respect Anakin's wishes and honor the gift that his father was offering. Looking at Anakin's spirit, Luke smiled back and simply said, Thank you, father. It's time then. He took his position on the large stone, sitting with his legs crossed and closing his eyes, stretching out with his feelings further out than he had ever attempted to before. He slowly began to levitate, concentrating all of his strength, all of his power within the Force, Luke pushed himself as far as he could, and then he felt his father's consciousness join with him inside the mystical energy field that connected all living things. The might of two Skywalkers, father and son, exploded out across the galaxy, as their combined power allowed Luke to manifest an image of himself on the distant planet Crate. Anakin watched through the Force, still joining his own strength with Luke's, as his son and daughter shared a final moment, and Luke went out alone in front of the First Order's might. Ben was there, his conflicted heart practically pulsating in the Force. Luke could only speak to his fallen nephew, apologizing for his failures and hoping to distract him long enough for the others to escape. By the time Ben realized that Luke was merely an illusion, it was too late. As Luke let the apparition vanish, he collapsed onto the stone, back on Octo. Although his father had combined their strength, he still felt weak, barely able to lift himself back up as the exertion from the projection took its toll. Father, he whispered weakly, lifting his head and swiveling his eyes in search of Anakin. But he was nowhere to be seen. Luke was alone. Silently, he mourned the loss of his father, this feeling different than Anakin's death had years earlier. To know that his father was truly gone, no longer existing within the Force with the ability to manifest physically or speak to him, caused Luke to become filled with a heavy sadness. But he also felt a new motivation, even as he mourned, an urgency he had not felt in several years. Although he had failed to raise a new generation of Jedi, this would not be the end for him or the Jedi Order. At that very moment, Leia, Rey, and the rest of the Resistance had just escaped the First Order's clutches, and with them traveled the hope for a brighter future. Thanks to Anakin's final gift, Luke knew that he would be able to help them, 
taking his place as Rey's Jedi Master as they sought to rid the galaxy of the darkness once and for all. Proceeding down to where his crashed X-Wing lay in the ocean, Luke reached out and began to raise it toward him. He didn't know how long it would take him to repair his ship, or if he even could, but he was certain that he would not die on the island. He would help his family and friends. He would help everyone. Once more, he was the legendary Luke Skywalker, and he would not be the last Jedi. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate you checking out my very first fanfiction. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback and if this is something you want me to continue to do and create more content like this on the channel, make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this and may the force be with you.